feeble. They're going to fail liberty. And then where are we? What do we do at that point? It's a rhetorical question for now. Getting away from the assault weapons ban just for a second, but not entirely. We actually have a ban against the assault on liberty. It's called the Bill of Rights. Uh, it's going to stay. That's the ban that we have against the assault on liberty. Today, government strives to ban the very instruments that preserve liberty, ironically. And it's almost always infringed upon by way of public safety. I might have to just for a moment pick up an email that I sent out long prior to Sandy Hook. Be patient with me just for a second. <laughs> this basically paints a sharp contrast between our founders then and our so-called leaders now. And I, I know most of you in here are probably familiar with Patrick Henry. You may, you may even be familiar with this quote. I don't know why our leaders don't speak this way anymore. I don't know what they're so afraid of. I don't know when liberty became su such a dirty, a dirty word. I don't understand it. Patrick Henry, quote, Guard with jealous attention the public liberty. Liberty, not safety. Guard with jealous attention. I picked this thing apart, word for word. Suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. It's a jewel. This is how these people felt back then. What happened to us as a country, as a people? And I take blame for that too. I, I, I wasn't always passionate about this. I think maybe all of us at some point in our lives took our eye off the ball. None of us are perfect. But you can read this gentleman's quote and understand what they saw and what they felt and what they feel they needed to say and pen into world history. That's how important it was to them. Unfortunately, I'm still quoting, nothing will preserve it but downright force. The hell did these people go through? We don't. We have no clue. Protect that jewel with downright <clears throat> force. That's what they felt was needed to preserve liberty. Whenever you give up that force, you are inevitably ruined. So we're going to be facing a point in time here, folks, when <coughs> it, it's very possible that all three branches of government are going to fail the people and fail liberty. Yeah. It's scary to think about. Let me go to the sharp contrast of, does anyone know who Senator Feinstein is? <laughs> <laughs> this brave lady was quoted as saying, if I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't there. Yeah, 1993. Guard with jealous attention the public liberty. <clears throat> Suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. And today we have Mr. and Mrs. America turn them all in. It brings a snicker to our, to our faces a little bit, but it's, it's downright sad. It's scary. The National Archives houses and preserves the original draft of the Constitution. And that's good. We, we want it preserved. But they preserve it and they display it much like a fossil, much like a dinosaur fossil, something that lived long ago and today it's just kind of neat to look at and then folks kind of keep right on moving. The meaning and the intent of the Constitution and or the Declaration of Independence, it has to be preserved by us. It has to be preserved in our hearts and our collective soul because the Constitution is only going to be as strong as the people that it represents. We cannot rely on one, two, or three of the branches of government to represent <coughs> us anymore. We have to represent each other. I think we have to stop looking for the next <coughs> excuse me, hot shot politician who says all the right things, acts the part, looks the part, turns out to be a mannequin. I won't say who I'm speaking of. 
And I just wonder now that collectively as a people, if we, if we haven't become so weak and so disconnected from our founding, that we elect such enemies of liberty. And those enemies of liberty appoint judges. And I'm afraid of the, the snowball effect that is happening in this country right now. I don't believe anymore, demographically, you're more of a political <clears throat> specialist than I am. With the demographics that we have in this country, I don't believe we're going to elect a, con a conservative to the White House ever again. I don't believe so. So what is my point to that? My point is that our hope is local. What can we do for each other, street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood? Everybody in here shares a common goal. We share common beliefs. And I, I think the time is going to come and we're going to have to start looking a little bit more introspectively, locally, at us, at our neighbors. And uh, because I think nationally, the goose is cooked. <laughs>